Hi everybody, my name is Joel and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I purchased two new bulls as well as branded those two new bulls. I uh, also learned a little bit about um, preparing a field by disking it and then uh, seeding it as well. Um, as well as some hiking footage as you see here uh, with my kids and I. Uh, here it, we are at the bull sale. Uh, the bull auction is kind of winding down a little bit at this point. Um, but it's pretty full of um, different uh, beef producers uh, purchasing bulls. Uh, pretty funny bet. So these are my new bulls. Okay, I think that they're, they grew up their whole lives in pens. They actually put themselves in that pen. They're not stuck in there. They just put themselves in there. They're in here with a cow that's an aggressive cow with her Calf. Wayne keeps her in here. Well, there's no such thing as a nice bull, buddy. You be careful with all of them. These ones are nicer than a lot of them, but they still can just get you if you're not careful. Here they come to see us. They're curious. Number 18, he cost six grand. That's number 18 on the right. And then he's 18 months old, and then the 26 on the left is 42.50. Just an auction for people are willing to pay. So, <laughs> 18 is a heifer bull, usually they sell for more. They can throw smaller calves. And he's got pretty good EPDs. Otherwise, other EPDs and things. Now here they are. I wouldn't stick your hands to the fence because there's a hot wire and maybe uh, they'd rub up into it and squish it. I've also been following the seller around and he's been teaching me about how to do farming a little bit. Here he's tagging a newborn calf. Uh, this always makes me nervous and mothers typically uh, come quite close and might get upset with you and they're huge, 13, 1400 pound animals uh, that aren't very happy with what you're doing to their babies. So sometimes it can be a little scary, but Wayne just takes it all in stride and gets it done. As you can see here, he's done already. Just picking up his stuff and walking off. Doesn't really hurt the calf. Just uh, goes in through some collagen in the ear or something. Here's a look at the field that um, I work to help disc and do uh, seeding in. Um, the field is as big as it looks here, pretty much as far as you can see. Uh, here I'm actually driving the tractor and uh, going around making the big loops, towing the uh, disc uh, to uh, turn up the earth. There's a real dilemma in the farming world about uh, whether you should do what I'm doing, which is tilling the earth, which you can see causes a big cloud of dust to come up, and a lot of that dust just blows away from the farm, and that's lost soil, uh, versus using chemicals. Here is my video explanation of how to grow this. This one on the left, it looks like it's in the middle. This one is what lifts it and lowers it. So if I push it up, push pull it back, that lifts the whole thing off the dirt. I'll push it down. Drops it in the dirt. So you want it in the dirt while you're driving. Uh, the second most important is the clutch right here. Press in the clutch before you put it in gear. Once it's in gear, you can either pull it up or down without having to use the clutch. But if you want to stop quick, Use the clutch and the brakes. Use the brakes. Uh, so for me to get going again here, I'll take it from this would be park up here. That's a park. Put park whenever you stopped. Get out of park. Push up. Bring down to neutral. 
Put it over in neutral. Here's the gears. Put it up to eight gear. That's where I'm going to start it. And there will be RPMs up to 1700. Slowly release the foot clutch. intersection. I think it's, uh, it's supposed to take like 10 to 12 hours of driving basically to do this whole thing. Cover off, having a little bit of oily looking grease, <laughs> a greasy looking oil, I guess, one or the other. Uh, here's the cover. You can use the driver to take it off, but when you put it on, get most of the way, then finish it with a uh, hand wrench so you can feel it, you're not going to over torque it and break it off. And then right here, same thing. Pull off the plug. There, loosen it up, drain out the water. There's still a little water actually dripping out of this one. Um, and then the cover full of oil, place the plug. And then the center drive, you move the cover. And here's the plug on the center drive. Right there, you loosen it up. and fill with oil if needed. Well, I think I'm in around an hour six of fisking right now. That's a wheel track. I went over that with my wheel in it to try and reduce the size. It seemed to help somewhat. Some improvement. Trailer over there, kids and wife. Blue house way up there on the hill. Getting the model for that hopefully this week. Queen's cattle. Buying all the ones up there on the hill. And a few of these here in the feedlot. Getting expensive. Louie over there working on the wheel gearboxes. Climbing in this wagon is my least favorite part of the job. You fall on one of those augers. It's going to be a real bad day. 
but the only way to get these strings off right now load up here just by climbing up here and doing it. There's nothing to secure yourself to. You're dependent on the hydraulics of the, the telehandler, which I don't believe in tell hydraulics that much. I'm gonna build a concrete three-side basin so I can cut off the strings and use a front loader to do it. But this is this is not fun. Augers chew it up for the cows to feed. And these augers push it out to the trough. Really a bad day to put your hand on that. Look at these beautiful clouds. Well, I'm hoping to break down here again to uh, come on the cedar. The tractor was seeding wheat into this 65 acre field. It's about a day and a half. It's to rain tomorrow, so we have to have it all in the ground today, ideally. Uh, still waiting for the sun to come up and try and clean up these windows on the tractor first and foremost, and then check the seed bubble and get fired up and going. And, uh, hopefully, get a lot done in a couple of hours. We'll see. <laughs> 
morning from Iker Farm. My kids call this place. See the dawn is breaking. And I'm missing doing a skip. <laughs> so I think I fixed the dam. Got to drive the track in here. Planting wheat. Uh, 65 acres of wheat. A lot of people have asked me why in the world would I leave a private country club where you play golf or you uh, have your own uh, area, all these nice folks to hang out with, and come by a farm and become a farmer. Uh, one of my reasons is that back in 2020, I came to realize how fragile our world is. a lot of people, but even if we didn't, we have a government that just does the stupidest imaginable things, uh, shutting down supply chains and businesses and things like that that are essential to human survival. It shows a little off of understanding how the world works. Um, so if those people in charge, uh, especially the Democrats of Portugal, I have very little faith that our system would continue to function with even minor disruptions, basically, which COVID ended up being a fairly minor disruption. Um, if you had a major disruption, nuclear war, or a serious disease, or full general artificial intelligence, which is basically already here, is a passing PhD or master's level test at better rates than humans can. Uh, the world could get real bad real quick. Uh, I also remember sitting in my house in Long Beach, California, thinking like, hey, you know, I got a wife and three kids, and how am I going to feed them when the supply chain, which only keeps a couple weeks of food here, runs out? Uh, and then we had... Uh, supposedly peaceful protest go by our house a block away, uh, breaking into businesses, looting the businesses, shattering windows, uh, assaulting people, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I had my very liberal neighbors coming over and saying, oh, we don't have guns. How do I protect my family? And, uh, uh, it was a really bit ugly situation, you know, and I just realized how vulnerable we are. So I decided to make sure that I prepared my family for eventualities that could happen over the next 25, 30, 40, 50 years uh, over my children's lifetime, maybe a little bit for my grandchildren's lifetime, as best I can. And I figure if we're on a farm and producing our own food, uh, that gives us the best insulation. Uh, this field I'm planting right here, for example, is 65 acres. I think you get a ton or two a week per acre. Uh, so 120 tons of food. We're not going to be running out of food here, at least. Uh, we also have a large cattle herd and all that sort of thing. So my idea is uh, uh, to follow the advice of uh, much wiser people than me, which which is to, in times of peace, prepare for war. Because when the war comes, it's going to be too late. You're not going to be able to run away or adjust or do any of the things you think you can do. One of the things I learned even over the last three years of living in Eatonville, trying to set up some basic farming stuff, is that it takes years to learn how to do this stuff and get it up and running. You're not going to be able to do it in a month or two, or an emergency situation. Uh, you just need to be prepared, have stuff figured out ahead of time. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do here. And maybe I'm a crazy person, but uh, uh, I think it'll lead to a better life than my family. Uh, and also, I'm going to see pretty things like this sunrise. And I get to be up here in the morning and join myself at 6 a.m. and uh, drive a little bit of tractor. So, it's 
my, my two cents, uh, take it away. in there guys.
don't you go drive the car? Can you, can you go drive? Look, 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 he's gonna do it, guys. Look and look. That door opens. These pins can remove and they can milk or access underneath. Uh, this thing will either pull this handle forward or release the front ones and let them out. Push backwards and release the back. And you can push this way and pull them out. This is how you adjust the size. This can get outer end just this side. And there's some holes in here, holes down there for adjusting. And then up here this thing will narrow the body position. So when you push it up it makes for a narrower, tighter body. You can squeeze the body with that. And then you just release it by lifting up on that and it releases.